Elliot Mintz, a sound portrait. Roy of Hollywood. In an era of bottled radio entertainment, the standard audio fare can be had by the case. It is the flat champagne of the establishment vineyard. The era calls for a free spirit. Enter Roy Tuckman, better known as Roy of Hollywood, to his radio listeners. Leave the taste for common radio at home. Roy does not do the norm. His work expresses his passions and interests. That doesn't mean that he dominates the airtime. Like a conductor on a train, Roy drives the show. He doesn't feel the need to get out and push. A veteran of radio for nearly 40 years, Roy of Hollywood goes on at midnight in what has been called Radio for Night People. His program is called Something's Happening, heard in Southern California on KPFK 90.7 FM. Rather than talking himself, Roy of Hollywood prefers to play interviews, poetry readings, lecture tapes, and even old radio broadcasts of mystical people like Alan Watts and Jack Garris. Consciousness and the mind are explored. In a rare interview, Roy of Hollywood shares the great moments and memories of his career in radio, his notions and opinions. In this excerpt of our talk, Roy of Hollywood gives us his insights on both his friend and colleague, Elliot Mintz, and the official Elliot Mintz website. Get on board for a ride through the mind and magic of Roy of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to introduce you to this man, Roy of Hollywood. He has hosted Something's Happening on KPFK out in Los Angeles for 38 years. Now, that brings to question this. Is there any radio show out in Los Angeles that has been on the air as long? Not that I know of, although there are, there are, I believe there are shows that have been on longer than 38 years, but are not long, are no longer on. Uh, Ray Bream, I think, was on for over 40 years on uh, KABC. He was a conservative talk radio show host on uh, with KABC. You had Elliot Mintz on your program not too long ago to, <laughs> yes. to kind of talk about this website, ElliotMintz.com. Great. Great website. It is quite remarkable. But the man behind the website, Elliot Mintz, who would you say he is? <laughs> I don't know. Elliot is. Elliot did a program on KPFK in the 1960s. He did a, several programs. One called Looking Out, and one called uh, Looking In, and then Looking Out. He had just come fresh from LACC Media School, and KPFK was again in the earlier days. It had a lot of open time, and a lot. It was looking for stuff or allowing stuff to come on. They sort of stuck him on the air. He brought in a young audience, and also a uh, expanded our small spiritual or metaphysical audience too. And he's extraordinarily talented interviewer. He has an amazing uh, empathy and interest in people. And it was a real treat to to listen to him and get to know him. KPFK was his first foray into the uh, media. And then he grew. He went on several other stations and then on television and was a major, I think, CBS a television reporter and got into uh, promotion and uh, became friends with John Lennon and Yoko and spent a lot of time with them, then got acquainted with or uh, in business with, I think they were A-list celebrities, but has never, somehow never lost his essential humanity, which is extraordinary. He was an activist. And he led a uh, big parade in the Sunset Strip to take back the Sunset Strip. He was uh, instrumental in organizing a um, love-in, the first love-in, which was huge in the Exposition Park. It was a formative period in the 1960s. He introduced in a major way Ram Dass and Jack Garris. He interviewed Alan Watts and just did a lot of exploration. So. 
of uh, reality inside and outside, and and he was always interesting. And even though he was younger than I, and his audience, I guess, was younger than than I, I still found him really interesting, and I was a big uh, listener. From your experiences knowing him in the professional sense that you've known him, do you think that Elliot is kind of a magnetic person? Oh yeah, he's he's one of a kind. He's one of a kind. He'll come right out and he eliminates a huge a huge amount of gains by saying I am not a smart person. He says right away. So that eliminates all of the uh, competition for, you know, how smart you are, how much information you have, how much history you know, uh just how intelligent you are in, in that kind of sword fighting. And it's very disarming. And he just he just hugely empathetic. I'm not a trusting person, but I trust Elliot. This is why I'm doing this interview at all. <laughs> but I, I do I love Elliot and a lot of people love Elliot. He's he's just an amazing one of a kind person. I have barely touched his his background and his experience, but I would say uh, visit his website, which is free, to see all the all the things he's done and things he thinks and and the people that he's had his eight million I think it was uh, not that many but I think it's two hundred and forty chapters of the Lost Lennon tapes, which is a national radio program playing the tapes that John Lennon made that have never seen had never seen the light of day and that he played it was also I would call more than you, anybody could possibly want to know about John Lennon and his but it's also if you're interested in the Beatles and the formative and the background and the the other side it's there and he has a lot of that uh, posted and the actually the uh, Iranian hostage uh, program is there and just this amazing website again it's free this is not an advertisement for something that's gonna make some bucks for somebody <laughs> what did you find on elliotmitch.com that was particularly interesting to you i like his background he has a, a lot of material by marianne williamson which surprised me i haven't done that much exploring on it because i <laughs> I spend a lot of time listening to things that are going to be or not going to be on my program, and none of that is going to be on my program because you know the various copyrights. Although I'm sure Elliot would allow allow that. His having Jack Garris on was the major thing that Elliot did in my life, uh, in many lives. And Jack Garris was a teacher and a pioneer, and never got. Famous, never wanted to, I'm sure, but having Jack on as a video of Jack Garris is just was astounding. It happened, I thought, for the first time in many years while we were doing the show, and I was just carried away. I was just watching, <laughs> watching Jack, and I completely forgot that, hey, you're on the radio, idiot. <laughs> you have a show to, you know, shepherd a lot of Ram Dass. Ram Dass also was a major, major person beginning in the 1960s not just because he was you know he was a partner with Tim Leary in, in the university and in psilocybin experiments but Ramdas was the first major person that was like a regular american person or he was a psychologist who uh, got interested in eastern spirituality and went to india and found a guru and learned a lot of things and translated Eastern mysticism into Western language. And he was just a major, major person. Elliot had him on many times. And there's a great deal of Ram Dass on Elliot's website, as well as a great deal of Tim Leary on, that I also had on my show. You can get lost in that place, uh, yeah. in his jukebox. Roy, I know you don't normally do interviews, so I have to express my gratitude. It's It's been a good experience for me to talk to you. I admire what you do. Well, thanks, Paul, and uh, you can thank Elliot for <laughs> for uh, arranging this, and he sees great things for your future. Well, Roy, thanks again. Okay, you too, Paul. <laughs> All right. Bye.